And we're back, guys. How's everyone doing? We are in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. And look, someone's got to win this tournament. It's a 500 tournament, a lot of points up for grabs. And someone's going to jump in the rankings. And I think it's going to be one of the top Americans. Now, Lude Miller's the champion here. Last year, she defeated Kanepi in a three-set battle where she dropped the first set. Kagula, that's right, she won the doubles title without Coco. And Coco actually won the doubles title with Kat McNally in 2019. And Kagula is a former champion here as well. The stars are out, guys, and we have an amazing day of tennis. And why not start things off with a bang? Someone who's got a chance to win this entire tournament, Corey Coco Golf. She's taking on one of her good friends, Haley Batisti. Now, Haley's a crafty left-hander. She came through qualifiers, and we saw her take out. We saw her take out Alicia Parks. Peyton Stearns, who would get the lucky loser spot. And she took out Pliskova in the first round. Can she take out Coco? Haley's playing with house money. She has nothing to lose now. She's never played Coco before. Haley, in my opinion, is a better... She's a better clay player. She's 29 and 21 on the season, 18 and 14 on clay, but she's having a pretty good hard season, 10 and six. She's got that left-handed awkward style that really makes opponents uncomfortable. She's big, she's strong, and she's very athletic. Taking on Coco, who's 27 and 12 on the season, ranked seventh on tours. He's a top 10 player, only 19. Coco's big time. Now, I recently talked about a lot of these former number ones you know, like Wong, uh, Marta Kashuk, uh, Clara Tawson, Claire Buell, who had an amazing junior career but haven't done anything on the main tour. Coco's lived up to the hype, you know. She just had so much pressure and a huge spotlight on her. People expect her to win numerous Grand Slams already, but you forget she's only 19. She just turned 19, but she's already made a Slam final. She's made a WTA yearly final, singles and doubles. She's been in the top 10 now for nearly two years. She literally has beat over 15 former or current top 10 opponents. Coco Solid, she's a top 10 player, and I do think she's changed her game in recent years. She used to be much more tactical, much more defensive. Now she just tries to hit through opponents. She just tries to overpower opponents, but she's only 19. I think she's still growing into her body. And like I said in the previous video, once she does mature as a woman and, and get that grown woman type of strength, I do see the tides turning in the head-to-head -head matchup with Iga Svantec because I think Iga's footwork is slowing down. I think her reign at number one is coming to an end. She just hasn't served well. She's starting to look sloppy. I mean, she barely won a match there against a ranked 207 player. So I think she's starting to hit it. I think her peak has, I think she's peaked. And I think Iga's, I don't think she can stay there for much longer. The tour is getting too good. And players like Coco, it's just getting better and better. I like Coco to come out. And uh, I like Coco to win this match. I think she's going to be a little too strong for Haley. And she should win this match. That's a pick there. Next up is going to be a matchup that's popcorn worthy. Svitolina versus Dasha Kina. Now, Alina's dominated this matchup. She's beat her seven times going back to, you know, when they were playing in, in the States here, 2016. But Dasha's getting older, right? Now, Alina's only three years older than Dasha Kina. She's got a much better career, a lot more titles, uh, bronze medalist, WTA champion. This matchup here, look, why has Svitolina dominated? Because they're the same player, right? Uh, not the best servers, but really good defensive players. And all around, Svitolina is just a better shot maker. And she's getting stronger with Gail helping her, you know, improve her game. This is a match here I think it's going to be closer than in pass. Uh, Svitolina, for the most part, she's won out of the seven times they played five of them in straight sets. I don't know if this is going to be a straight set victory for Svitolina because I think Dasha Kina played very well the first round. In the first round, Dasha Kina, she took out Elise Mertens. Solid, solid competition. Now, Svitolina did beat Azarenka, but I don't know, guys. It seems like Azarenka just kind of let that match slip through her hands. Azarenka had a chance to close out the first set. 
she had a chance to force a tiebreak in the second set. It just seems like she just ran out of gas. I don't know. What do you guys think? Now, of course, Fidelina is the favorite in this match. She should be rightfully so. But uh, I think Dasha Kina could upset Fidelina out right here. I'm going to take Dasha to win at least one set. She does have, prob I'd probably say Fidelina stronger, just as athletic. But I do think Dasha's probably got the better stamina right now. So I'll take Dasha to win at least one set. That's a pick. Dasha to win at least a set, and I think she'll probably win the match outright as the underdog. Little Lauren Moneyline Davis taking on Belinda Benchik. Listen, guys, if you've ever seen Belinda walk to that baseline, oh, is that a sight? What a beauty, Belinda. Now, she's taking on Lauren Davis, who looked, like I said, I started to only just do one video. I had a numeric lock, Lauren Davis over Sloan Stevens. Started to do one video. I said, you know, why don't we just focus on the whole draw? So here we are. Lauren Davis taking on Belinda and... They've played three times. Uh, Belinda's won all three of them. She owns the head-to-head. -head. But Lauren Davis, is, she's always a sleeper, guys. She's a good shot maker. As long as she's serving well, she's going to be in every rally she plays in. A 24 and 14 on the year, 15 and 5 on hard. Taking on Belinda, who hasn't really been active, 24 and 8, 17 and 5. But Belinda's got two titles on the year, right? And she's the type, she just, she just sneaks in these 500 championships. I think she's a sleeper to win this tournament, to be honest with you. Uh, she took out Potapova in the first round. Uh, Potapova had to retire. And Davis has come through qualifiers. She struggled against Smith and Kruger and even Sloan Stevens for the most part. And uh, I don't think Belinda's going to struggle here. I like Belinda to win this matchup. I think she's just, her ground strokes going to be a little too powerful for Lauren, even though Lauren's going to be in a lot of these rallies. Once Belinda starts to apply the power to the back end, I, I, I see Lauren Davis making mistakes on the forehand side. So I like Belinda to get past Lauren Davis. Now, a question that's really good is, can Belinda win this tournament outright? I do think an American will win it, but don't sleep on, don't sleep on Belinda. Next up, guys, we have Serana Cerstea from Romania. Who needs Simona Halep? But listen, guys, I told you Simona Halep's information is back on the WTA site. I'm all over that site every day, and I'm telling you guys, the fact that she's back on the site means she's going to make a return. You know how it is with these doping cases. You look, They suspend the player indefinitely, and then all of a sudden, the player just pops up back in a tournament, and they have some type of news story saying, hey, you know what, we made a mistake, or, uh, you know, it wasn't as bad as we thought it was, or there's always some type of news story after the person after the athlete experiences public humiliation they come back and there's some type of apology or they made a private agreement to you know you know whatever take a shorter take a shorter suspension for the public humiliation and uh, an apology however from what i've heard i've heard simona just plead her innocence all along so i don't know maybe they're going to announce there was a mistake with the testing and she'll be back but in the meantime, Serrano's the face of Romanian tennis. Yes, Jacqueline Christian got the huge upset at the Prague Open over um, oh, Marie Buscova. But guys, what's up with what's up with my girl, guys? Yeah, my girl from Romania, Big U. Where's she at? I mean, she didn't even defend her championship in Palermo. But what about Gabby Elena Russe? I want to see Gabby. But listen, Serrano's a favorite amongst Romanian tennis fans and this is going to be a tough matchup she's taking on the defending champion who's look she's not the number one seed she's the eighth seed which I, I always think if you're the defending champion you should be the number one seed out of respect but barely 500 on the year Lude Miller 24 and 15 on the year Serrano Sorste these two have never played each other different types of styles Serrano loves that backhand uh, she's a good shot, shot maker between the lines. She's an experienced veteran. She doesn't make a lot of mistakes. I mean, Serrano's got nearly 250 wins on clay, almost three times that of Ludmilla. She's eight years her senior, but Ludmilla captured two championships last year. We saw her win this cha championship here. She also went to Chicago, or was it Cleveland? She, yep, she won Cleveland and D.C. Taking out Danielle Collins in the first round, Danielle has a similar style to Serrano. They want to get to that backhand. And um, I like Luton Miller to win the first set. I think she can win the first set on the money line. I think that she's a front runner. 
and this is a matchup where you can't sleep on Serana to come back. But I'm gonna take Ludmilla. She plays her best tennis in the first set. So first set money line for Ludmilla to win this matchup. Next up, we're gonna take a look at another sleeper that could possibly win this tournament. The French woman, Bonjour Montelli Vu, Carolyn Garcia. Now listen guys, you know I'm a huge Carolyn Garcia fan. A lot of people just doubted her earlier in her career. They said, look, you can't win with that type of aggressive style. It's unconventional. All you do is you hit aces and run forward and charge the net. You can't win that way. Now, I don't think Carolyn's the best baseline I really don't I think uh, she's much better playing about a foot or two inside the baseline I think she's better going to the forehand I think she struggles on the backhand side uh, I don't think she's serving that well she's making a lot of double faults or faults in general and Marta on the other hand I think Marta's very athletic she's powerful you saw what she did to Bianca but she's still green uh, she struggles on her serve. Uh, I, don't, I don't think she's the best baseliner. She makes a lot of unforced errors coming off of that forehand side facing north. This is the matchup I just got to take Carolyn Garcia. I think her serve will get it through when Marta starts to struggle. It's hot out there. Marta's a diva. I'll take Carolyn Garcia to get the victory here. And Carolyn's a sleeper to win this tournament. Don't sleep on Carolyn Garcia. She's got an opportunity to win this tournament here. And last but not least, little Peyton Stearns NCAA champion. Look, she started the year ranked like 700 or 500, something like that. I don't know. And she's worked her way to the top, guys. She is balling. She's playing wherever she can get in. Look, she's got she's got the funding, and it's starting to result in wins. And she's getting the job done, ladies and gentlemen. She's now down to ranked 59. She's inside the top 60, and she's got a chance here to really show the American fans that she can ball. She took out Magdalena Frack in the first round. That was a good match. Now, everyone knows I'm a huge Magdalena fan, 25 and 21 on the season. She's balling. She's finally got her way, finally made her way inside the top 100. Now, she was a little higher than ranked 80th, but she dropped, lost a little bit of points there, but... I love Magdalena. Keep balling, young lady, and uh, hopefully you'll win a big, big tour championship soon. Now, Peyton Stearns, look, she's playing with house money. Nothing to lose here. She's taking on Pegula, who's won this tournament uh, once before. Pegula's ranked fourth in the world, 35-12 and 12 on the season, amongst the top leader in wins on tour, 19-6 and six on hard. Now, we saw Pegula lose against uh, Von Drusova at Wimbledon. She hasn't played since, but she's a professional. She's got one of the best coaches in the business. These two ladies, they have similar numbers in terms of serving, uh, holding service games, and winning return games. I do think Payton's, look, she's young. She's, she's a young lady. She's fast. She's athletic. She's playing with house money. She's going to win some service games, but I do like Pagula to, to calm things down and just just kind of teach her a lesson here. I like Pagula to win this match on the money line. Those are the picks, guys. Enjoy the video. Stay tuned. The podcast is coming. I have some really great things I'm working on, so coverage has been limited lately, but show some love, like the video. We'll be right back, guys. Tennis in a minute. I am Good Energy. Thank you all for the love and support. The channel is doing well. We're coming off of our best month ever. And thanks again. Enjoy the picks, guys.